In an era of warp speed change, it stands to reason that our education system must keep pace. Educators, government officials, and the business community are taking a fresh look at the skills and knowledge kids need in order to be ready for college and the 21st century workforce. It's a matter of what's taught, the curriculum, how it's taught, teacher preparation and professional development, and how the learning is measured, assessment. By passing the No Child Left Behind Act, which requires the states to assess the majority of the public school population, the federal government set a high bar for school performance. But at the same time, educators need to look at the learning of the individual students, what's working and what isn't. The state tests are measuring only certain pieces of information, so what we do is we take the information from those tests and then try to make it work in the classroom. Um, specifically what I do is I take a uh, look at the individual categories and try to find out what those kids' weaknesses are and then build upon those weaknesses. So each week they take um, individual tests and then those kids that have scored below, say, 80%, we take and work with that in a small group, usually at the back part of the classroom, and uh, focus in on the specific skill, then put them back into the entire classroom population again and uh, see how did they get it. If they got it, then we can take and move on. Statewide assessments, which measure student achievement against state standards, are generally administered annually. Commercial interim assessments identify students who are falling behind and are used to predict performance on the statewide assessment. But in order to reach all students, teachers need more immediate information. Frequent classroom assessment enables teachers to find out what students really know and allows them to make instant instructional changes. Properly used, a combination of statewide, interim, and classroom assessments form a balanced assessment system. There are many different types of assessments. They have different purposes and therefore they have different characteristics. The state and commercial tests tend to be more efficient instruments and they have very little diagnostic value but their purpose is really for program improvement. Uh, you can see from the results of a statewide test for example how different subgroups of students might perform. There are different types of classroom assessments as well. There are tests that teachers use to assign grades to students. The uh, other type of assessment teachers use is, is what they do while they're teaching a topic. And these are assessments that are really very uh, informal often, uh, and they involve uh, observations, questioning, uh, homework. Many teachers still don't know as much as they should about using data from multiple measures as they struggle to include formative assessment methods into everyday classroom practice. Both large-scale and classroom assessment play an important role in a comprehensive assessment system. They each have their place. And with large-scale assessment, we're really looking at accountability. It's a big picture of what's happening in a school or district. With classroom assessment, it has a very different use. And teachers oftentimes use classroom assessment at the end of a piece of learning. They may use that summative assessment to assign grades or to really get a sense of where kids are after a unit of study or after a, you know just a couple of days of instruction and so while each has its place they're equally important and um, as I said before part of a large picture of assessment for a school or district. While educators explore new teaching and testing methods, standards-based assessment must also adapt to measure 21st century skills, informing a curriculum that prepares students for a global economy and a technology-driven world. There are probably several categories people use for describing 21st century skills. There are some more cognitively oriented categories, uh, such as uh, critical thinking skills and problem solving. Uh, there are some specialized areas like uh, technology literacy, media literacy, uh, economic literacy. And so critical thinking, problem solving, those types of skills really require something called performance assessment. Basically, the, the students have to be producing something, a scorable product. Uh, it might be a presentation, it might be a written document, whatever. And those are the kinds of things that, that, that can be used more effectively to measure some of those 21st century skills. For more than a quarter century, measured progress has helped improve teaching and learning by measuring what students know and can do. As a pioneer in the field of standards-based testing and alternate assessment, this nonprofit organization believes that assessment is a means to an end, not an end itself. 
Our mission is to improve teaching and learning by providing high quality assessment tools and related products and services. Staying true to that mission actually has, has been pretty easy for us because a large number of our employees, certain groups within the company, as well as uh, individuals in key leadership roles, are educators. Educators have a passion for teaching and learning, and so that's, that's been a, a driving force uh, behind our orientation. Measured Progress prides itself in forging lasting relationships with states and districts. As one client said, people at Measured Progress have a stake in the outcome. It's not just a job. I think Measure Progress is different because it was founded 25 years ago by educators. And most of the people in key positions here started in the classroom. So we've got a very intimate and deep knowledge of the needs of teachers and students and state departments of education. That really helps us understand how to best approach assessing the kinds of skills that they're expecting their students to show. And our job then is to find the richest and deepest way to measure how well that works. Headquartered in Dover, New Hampshire, Measured Progress started with a staff of four in 1984 and has grown to nearly 450. Many employees are former teachers with a passion for helping children learn. The company's commitment goes far beyond accuracy, compliance, and timely on-budget performance. Clients always find an open door and can expect sound advice and solutions that work. I like to go into schools. I like to visit with teachers and kids and talk to administrators and say, tell me your story and get a sense of how we can help them, how we can help guide them and make a plan that will work. The thing that I think is critical is that districts and schools and states see this as their work. It's really not the work uh, that we come in and, and just sort of have some magic bullet that makes things get better and change in a positive direction in terms of assessment. It's really about what's embedded in what the, the teachers and what the kids are already doing and how to make that come alive and move forward in the direction of more students meeting standards and achieving more and learning more. The company truly strives for progress at all levels. By helping teachers apply best assessment practices in the classroom, designing statewide assessments that inform the course of standards-based instruction, and influencing national education reform. Measured progress influences education by providing reliable and rich evidence of student learning. We don't do this alone. State departments of education, teachers, parents, districts, all come together and decide what is it important for their students to learn. And our job then is to take the best tools and processes and assessment procedures to that test and evaluate how well the students are doing. And what we really do is provide the feedback that they need to manage their students and their operations in the best way possible. And so the future of Measure Progress is tied very, very closely to the future of education. As, as educators begin to look at different things in different areas, technology, um, other types of literacy, we need to come up with assessments and products and, and methods of making sure that students are learning those things. That's our job. Find out what measured progress can do for your school, district, and state. It's all about student learning, period. For more information, visit measuredprogress.org.